the array what is it how can we use it it's basically a list like a shopping list <laughs> exactly now let me give you an example of why we would want to use an array let's say in a real fortnite game oh you have 100 players i want to keep track of all my players what i could do is create a separate variable for one so let's do it together i'm going to create player one player two player three, player four, so on and so forth. See how that gets annoying real fast? It'll also clutter up your code real fast as well. So instead of doing all this, why don't we group them in a single list? First, you want to create the name of the array. Here, I'm going to call my array uh, materials count. Now, um, for this array, I'm going to be storing the counts of the materials I have. So after the name, you follow this up with a colon. What goes after this colon is the type. I want this to be of type integer but not just of type integer, an integer array. So we prefix uh, the in with these uh, square brackets. That's basically telling the computer that this is not just an integer, it's an array of integers. So next, we assign this to some default value. You can do this by typing equals and then array, and then open these quickly braces. If you leave this like this, that's gonna create an empty array, but that's no fun. So I'm gonna specify my elements here. Inside these quickly braces, you can specify your elements, each one separated by a comma. That basically creates three elements, uh, 400, 500, and 200. Okay, how do we access our elements? Well, um, your arrays are zero indexed. What this means is that the first element corresponds to index zero. So if we get index zero, we're going to be getting the first element. And then the second element would be index one, and so on and so forth. Now, I'm going to make a wood variable here. And this, I'm going to make it of type int. And I'm just going to grab the very first value in the array. Remember how we said it's index 0? Yeah, so we type in index 0. And crash, we get an error. Why? We read the error, it says function, something about effect, something about context. To understand this, we need to know something about verse. So verse, the programming language. In verse, everything is what's called an expression. An expression is just something that returns or evaluates to something. For example, the expression 2 plus 5, that would give a value of 7. But there are certain types of expressions called failable expressions. Now, these failable expressions either return something or fail and return false. Now, it's safe to say that failures are very bad in programming, especially in a game. Let's say you have a failure in somewhere else that could potentially crash your game. So we need a sort of haven or a special place where we can handle these failures. We can mess up as much as we want, not have any consequences. This space is called a failure context. So the most common failure context is going to be inside an if expression. Why is that? Well, remember that failable expressions, they either return a value or return no value. And if they return no value, then that means it fails, which means it's going to return false. And if statements, well, their job is to determine whether or not something is true or false. So even if your code fails inside an if statement, well, remember, um, nothing is going to execute because that if statement or any code below the if statement is only going to execute if your the actual thing inside the if statement, in this case, our failure expression, succeed. Now, on the other hand, if your expression fails, then your if statement will evaluate to false, and you're just not going to do anything as shown in the diagram here. So you can see I've enclosed this in an if statement, and the error goes away. We have no more error. I can type in colon, and I can do with my would variable what I want. And of and a cool thing I can do here is I can just delete the type here because uh, because I'm inside here, it's just going to infer the type implicitly, which just means it's just going to automatically uh, convert to whatever type this is. So I can just delete int and just type colon to equals, just skip the type altogether. So like we said, if uh, there is something in the materials count zero, aka if there is a first element, we assign that to wood. And if that fit succeeds, then we can print this, the following. You have, you have wood. Wood. I'm in my Fortnite game. I start my game. I and as you can see in the corner, I get you have 400 wood, just as we expected. Okay, now I'll show you guys what happens when my failable expression, in this case accessing an element, fails. So here I'm gonna get brick and my metal, which are of index one and two, but I'm also I'm also gonna get a diamond variable, which is materials of three. Now, like I said, three would correspond to the fourth element, but there is no fourth element. But you can see here we get no errors. Now imagine you legit accidentally do, did this in a real code uh, and there was no failable expression. This would cause your game to crash because there is no um, element 4 in your materials count array. 
So this is why this is a failover expression, and you must, whenever you access a array element, you must put it inside an if statement, except when you're looping, which we'll get to in a second. Now, as you can see, I started my game, and there's nothing printing on. Basically, the if statement told me, no fam, you have no, you messed up, but I'm, I got your back. I'm, I'm just not gonna do whatever you told me to because that'll cause the game to crash or whatever. Now, let's go back and remove this and just print out all these. And you're going to see that that prints out nicely because every one of those element arrays is a valid index or is a valid element. Okay, I still have an issue here. I still need to create a different variable for every single element, which is kind of annoying. What I'm going to do instead is loop over the array. So loop over every element in the array. And this looks like this. So first type in the for keyword with the, for every element within the array. Then you're going to want to put a single sort of generic variable name. In my case, I'm going to put material count. Type in colon and then the actual name of the array that I want to loop over. In my case, materials count. And in here, I can run code for every single element in my array. And every element is going to be called material count. So if I print out you have and then the material count, we should be able to print out this for every single element, every material. Now, what about changing the array? Well, to start, you first you need to make your array a variable array, which means adding the var keyword before you, the name of your array, like so. First, you're going to type set, which is going to change the value of the array. And we have to initialize it to a new array, which you can do array. If you just set it to array, it's going to make your materials count an array, basically removing everything. Okay. Now, in verse, you can concatenate or add arrays together. So, for example, if I add one array plus another array, that's going to give me a single array. And we can leverage this power by adding our initial array and, and another array containing uh, extra elements. In this case, I'm just going to add another array containing another element, 99999. And this should work to give us to basically add a new element to our existing array. And you can see that works nicely. So there's a lot more you can do with arrays as far as functionality wise. Um, you can There's a bunch of functions that involve arrays. Uh, you can find them all here in the documentation here if you look up here verse module and you go in here and you go into the verse module you can go down here i'll say down here there's a bunch of operators and stuff but here if you read the description some of these say make a flattened array or make an array or stuff so that just means these operators are specifically for arrays so we can slice we can insert we can remove element we can do a bunch of stuff here there's a lot, so I can't really cover them all. For example, I'm going to use the insert or the insert function to demonstrate what that would look like. So if you go in here, we can read um, the parameters and more info about the function. It says it takes an input, which is an array of any, an insertion index, which is the index where we want to insert our elements, and then elements to insert, which it takes an array. So we're going to specify an array, and that's what we're going to be inserting at the element. Okay, so first, this function is technically a failover expression, which means we need to put it inside an if clause. Next, uh, remember how that function returns an array? So we're going to assign this new array to a new variable. I'm going to call this new array. And it's going to be colon equals. Remember, we can skip the type in the if statement, so we can just skip that. For our input, firstly, we call our actual array. So in my case, it's called materials count. That's going to be our input. And then we call the dot insert function. All right. Next, you want to open up square brackets. Uh, this one is a failable function. So that's why you need the square brackets as opposed to just the regular parentheses. In here, the first argument is the index that I want to insert. I'm going to insert my new array at the beginning of my list. And the next argument is going to be the actual array or the actual elements that I want to insert. So I'm going to insert a new array. I'm going to have one, two, three, four. Now, if that succeeds, I'm going to set my new, my, sorry, my materials count array to my new array. So that should give me a new array with elements at the beginning. And if I go into my Fortnite game, you can see the elements at the beginning. All right, that's basically it. Uh, just one final tip for the for loop. You can actually specify, if you want the index of the array, you can do the following. So do index and then arrow and then uh, the actual element name. And this index we can use as a just a regular variable. So here I'm just going to pass in the index and we can see that prints out. So yeah, that's basically it for arrays. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. But yeah, I hope this was helpful and 